Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to show you guys a very small but yet simple to use Linux operating system called Alpine Linux. So let's get started. Since downgrading my home lab from a Dell R810 over to a NAS, a mini PC and also a Raspberry Pi, uh, one of the key factors that you're gonna start to notice is that resources are very important, especially on a mini PC that's running Proxmox with only 16 gigs of RAM. You need to find as little resources to use as possible. And that means you're gonna have to use some sort of operating system that will take next to nothing to run. So since I've been running Dockers a lot on my setup, uh, you will soon realize that resources as far as RAM and storage uses is one of the key factors factors in setting up a docker. Now I still run VMs and I still run software here and there so I do really need to still use an actual VM or an actual Linux operating system at times. So I used to just spin up a Ubuntu server and leave it as minimal as possible but still that takes a lot of resources compared to what we're going to be doing today. So what I'm going to be showing you guys today is installing Alpine Linux on our VM as well as installing docker just to see how many resources it takes. To jump into it, I already have some stuff set up. Now, this is my mini PC Intel Nook. It's not powerful, but I am gonna be doing some huge upgrades to it. So that video will be coming soon. But for now, we have an i5 eighth generation, uh, eight, well, it's actually four cores and four threads. So it says eight CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM, and I think 512 gigabytes of storage. It's enough for me to spin up some stuff, but I got to test a lot of operating systems here and there. So I constantly have to like destroy and create VMs because this mini PC just doesn't have enough resources. Now I'm going to show you guys Ubuntu server and I'm going to jump into the console. This is a blank install. I just installed this, uh, yeah, is it uptime? an hour and a half ago. And I did not do anything to it, no updates, it's just a blank server install. So if I go over to HTOP, you're gonna realize that it's running 173 megs of RAM. And if I go into df-h, it's using about 6.6 .6 gigs of storage just for a standard install. It doesn't even have Docker installed yet. It just has OpenSSH and that is it, just the server and OpenSSH. Now, I'm gonna go over to my PVE, install the VM, and I'm just gonna name this 406, 406, and I'll call this Alpine. Now, I don't have to reallocate much resources to it because it doesn't take much, but I'm gonna be using Alpine Standard 3.6, and I'll leave a link down in the description below to where you can download the ISO. Leave this as standard. You might wanna use QM Agent, uh, it's up to you. Disk, I'm gonna leave it as 32 gigabytes, CPU, I'm gonna give it about two cores. Memory, um, two gigs of RAM is more than enough, but I'll just leave it as standard. Network, confirm, and I'm gonna build this up. Give it a second while I'm just waiting for it to spin up. And I am gonna start this right about now. So I'm gonna to go to start. It does have the ISO in there already. It's gonna boot. And the boot times on Alpine Linux is ridiculously fast. Even this is the ISO right now, so it's not even a test, but I'm gonna show you guys how fast it is to boot up in, on a standard install. All right, when you first get in, all you have to do is type in root. There's no password, it's just root. And you would have to type in, let me clear the screen, but let me type in setup Alpine. And that is it. You go through this installation and it's gonna install it into your hard drive. Now I'm gonna use US as keyboard layout. Uh, the key mapping is also going to be US. Host name, I'm going to call this Alpine. Um, ETH0, that's correct. Uh, do I want DHCP? Yes. Uh, manual configurations? No. And it's going to see if we get internet. It's working. It's got the IP address. Now for the password for root, I'm just going to give it a simple password. Now, uh, time zone, you could leave it as UTC. If you know the list of your own, you could just pop that in there. I'm not gonna run through a proxy, so none for this. And then the mirrors. Unfortunately, I can't really scroll up to see what it is, but I'm just gonna leave it as one. You could actually choose the mirrors to see which one's closer to you. Um, do you wanna create a username? At this point, you could just type in the username and create a user. I'm just gonna say no and I'll leave it as root. Which SSH server you want to install? For me, I'm just gonna leave it as OpenSSH. You could use Dropbear. Either one's fine. 
Um, allow root to SSH login? Yes, because I don't have any other access because I didn't create another account. Normally you would say no, but I'm just gonna say yes for this one. I don't have a SSH key, so I'm gonna leave that as none. Select the hard drive that are available, uh, SDA. So I'm gonna leave that. Um, now this one you could choose if you have multiple partitions, multiple hard drives, you wanna do it in, in a different format where you wanna store your data in a different drive or something like that. This is where you would choose what you want. So I'm just gonna use sys to store everything together. Now it's gonna run through the install. Do you want to erase? Yes. Creating file system. This is gonna copy all the stuff over to the SDA1 and create the partitions for you. This is really rather quick, just to install this entire operating system, maybe under a minute, I would say, or maybe about a minute. Oh, it's done. Where, however long I was just talking, that's how long it took. So now I could just reboot and watch this boot time. So this is the start and Alpine will boot in one second. Probably could get rid of that to make it quicker. And that is it. We are pretty much booted. I'm just waiting for the login. There you go. That took, I don't know, 15 seconds, if any. Because I don't have any other user, I'm gonna log in as root and the password we just typed in. And that is it. We have our operating system up and running. Now it's blank to the point where, look, if I hit df-h, we're only using 124 megabytes. If you add these two together, we're using 100 megabytes for SDA3 and the boot partition, which is 24 megabytes, which holds your boot keys and everything. That's it. It's 127 megabytes total. And we have tons of empty space free from a 32 gigabyte drive versus Ubuntu server where it uses six gigs just on the, the standard install. I mean, that alone is a huge difference. Now Alpine doesn't have any software installed yet. You do have to install them manually and they do have their own package installer, which is called Alpine Package Keeper or APK. And you could just do APK and install stuff. But because we only have the main repository, we do need to edit it so we could actually unlock the community uh, repository to unlock a lot more libraries. Now to do that, since we don't have Nano, we're gonna use VI. We're gonna to go to ETC, APK, and there should be a file called repositories. There you go. So VI, ETC, APK, repositories. In here, you want uncomment community. So I'm gonna hit I to allow me to edit, delete the uh, pound or the hashtag or whatever you guys wanna call it. I'm gonna hit escape, colon, WQ which means write and then quit. So there, now if I go into APK, I could now add update and let's do something easy, HTOP. That will actually grab all the stuff and that just installed HTOP. So now I could actually go into HTOP and show you. It's only using 83 megs of RAM, which is half of 100 and, what was it, 173? Yeah, 173, half of that and I'm only using about 120 megs of storage and barely anything else. Like this is nothing compared to, and look at the amount of things that is actually currently running. The only thing I have going on is DHCP and probably SSH. Yeah, SSH right here. So if I go into Ubuntu server and their HTOP, look how many things it's running. Snap, um, policy kit. I have tons of things running just to get the operating system up and going. Now, if I want to add Docker, I would do APK, add, update, and then this is where I would do Docker. And if you want Docker Compose, you would install those too. And that's it. It'll install all that. Okay, 400, 300. If I do DF-H, now I used up about 300 megabytes for HTOP, Docker, Docker Compose, and I'm still under half a gig for getting Docker installed. Now to get Docker up and running, you would do RC, uh, RC update, RC update. I forgot the command for a second. It's add Docker boot. And there you go. It's gonna add it at run level. Now, if you wanted to run it now, you could just do service start Docker. There you go. I had the commands backwards, but it's service docker start. And now if I go into HTOP again, 
you're gonna see Docker right here. It's running in the background. And if I want to do Docker status, Docker PS, uh, I've got nothing running in here right now, but Docker is responding and it is running. So with HTOP again, uh, we are now running 117 megabytes, 121, with Docker running df-h again, just to check, it's still 403 megabytes. And if I do a reboot real quick, it's gonna run when your system boots up because that's where we are added to the RC update. So let's give this one second, you're gonna see, it's gonna broadcast over here on the bottom. And there you go. It's right over here, Docker daemon. And root, pop back into here, htop, Docker's running. 92 megs of RAM after a fresh reboot and running all those other stuff. Now, if you wanted to run this as a normal desktop, you can install XFCE and a bunch of other stuff to run a minimal uh, Linux operating system. So you can actually take this a little bit further. I use this personally just for VMs and running servers and stuff like that. Something that I needed to run real quick, like a Python script or certain things that I don't want to waste that many resources on running Ubuntu for. Well, that is it. Um, I'm gonna leave uh, resources on the bottom just to their documentation so you could know how to use their APKs and updates and stuff like that. Uh, I would highly recommend trying this out on your VM or even anywhere else like Raspberry Pi because it does support ARM32 and ARM64. Uh, just to spin up something small and play around with this. There's a ton of guides out there. Just Google Alpine Linux with whatever you're trying to do, say like Docker containers or something like that. And somebody have written a write-up on how to install it, which is pretty simple in most cases where it's just APK add and then, you know, the program that you need. Uh, there are some um, weird things that you have to do for certain things, like create your own scripts. Like uh, I know uh, QEMU guest agent, requires you to actually make your own script to run it, which is not a big deal, but there are little things like that that you might have to look up just to make sure how to run certain things. But otherwise, uh, it's been really solid. I've been running a lot of things using Alpine. It's small, lightweight, and super simple to run. That's, that's how I conclude it. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below or hit me up on Discord. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And I say my nerd cave, Hack till it hurts.